In today's video, you're gonna learn all about blood flow restriction training, specifically what it is, how to use it, and four specific protocols to follow depending on your goals. So let's get started. Get up and get down, get up and get down. BFR is the process of restricting blood flowing out of a working muscle by wrapping a tourniquet-like strap to the top of your arms or legs. The tight-fitting material allows blood to flow into your arms or legs through the arteries, but limits the amount of blood that can leave the limbs through your veins. This restriction creates numerous changes within the body during exercise that has been found to increase muscle strength and size, optimize recovery from injury, and enhance aerobic capacity. So, how does it work? Dr. Mario Novo, one of the foremost researchers on the topic, explains that BFR simply changes the environment your brain thinks you're in. Basically, you trick your body into thinking it's performing very intense exercise when you're not, and it responds accordingly. Here's how it's believed to work scientifically. One of the first things you'll experience when using BFR is an increase in your heart rate. The tightly fitting cuffs essentially trap blood within your arms and legs and create a low oxygen hypoxic environment. Your body senses this drop in oxygen within the muscles and responds by increasing your heart rate to an effort in pumping blood flow and therefore oxygen to the working muscles. As you continue to exercise, you'll start to feel an extreme muscle pump sensation. Imagine for a moment the most intense muscle pump you've experienced while lifting and then multiply it by 10. It's that intense if you're performing BFR correctly. And this is where the magic of BFR starts to happen. This pump sensation is the feeling of fluid shifting into the muscle cells called cellular swelling. Human growth hormone levels begin to rise, lactic acid starts to build, and a gene within your body called mTOR is stimulated all essential factors in supporting muscle growth and repair. On a cellular level, numerous tiny cells called satellite cells simultaneously converge to help repair damaged tissue and build new muscle and bone. This building fatigue in your arms or legs then tricks the brain into thinking you're lifting heavy weight when you're not, which causes the brain to start recruiting more and more high intensity fast twitch type two fibers that are usually only recruited when you're performing very heavy lifts. Over the past few decades, there have been hundreds of published scientific articles detailing the many benefits and uses of BFR, from those on bed rest to injury and those elite athletes looking to maximize for the performance. These benefits include, but are not limited to, increasing muscle size, called hypertrophy, optimizing strength during the rehab process from injury when you can't lift heavy, post-training recovery, and improving aerobic endurance and capacity. Let's talk about how to perform. We need to start by finding your LOP. The simplest method is to fasten a strap around the arm or leg and pull it to a seven out of 10 level of tightness called practical BFR. This method is very easy to perform and also cost effective. However, there are some big downsides as you'll soon see. The largest drawback to using a knee wrap to perform BFR is that you could potentially restrict blood flow into both your arteries and veins. Remember to allow the magic of BFR to work effectively, we need to create a swelling response in the limbs by allowing blood to get into the working muscles, but limit the veins from returning blood flow to the heart. Also the difficult part about saying, wrap your arm or leg to a seven out of 10 level of tightness is that it's extremely subjective. In the same way that many of my patients miraculously have a high pain tolerance, it's common to see many athletes overestimate their intensity and over apply practical BFR. Simply put, this method of BFR is not very reliable. Using a simple knee wrap doesn't allow for optimal restriction of blood flow or consistency between your training sessions. Therefore, in order to get the best results from using BFR, you need to inflate your cuff pressure to a personalized set pressure point based off your individual limb occlusion pressure called LOP. This ensures that we shut off safely the exact amount of blood flow in and out of the arms if we want the desired training effect. For example, it's recommended that most only use 30 to 50% of their LOP with their upper body, while 50 to 80% for optimizing lower body training. Knowing your individual LOP allows you and your friend to get the best benefits from BFR training by setting the pressure in the cuffs to a personalized pressure of your LOP. To find your LOP, you usually use a handheld Doppler that will allow you to hear the pulse running through your arteries in your extremities. or you can use a unit that will find this percentage for you, like this version from Smart Cuffs. The pressure of your pulse eventually will disappear as the cuff inflates at your LOP, and then you can set the cuff pressure at a percentage of this level for your chosen exercise. So let's now talk about some practical applications. Here's four of the most common BFR training plans that can be implemented by athletes and coaches. The first is for strength and hypertrophy training. The second will be for warming up. Then we'll go over cardiovascular endurance capacity. 
and then finally talk about post-workout recovery or passive maintenance. First, let's talk about strength training or hypertrophy with BFR. The standard routine to improve strength or hypertrophy with BFR is a simple four set protocol. The first set is 30 reps and the next three are 15 reps, each with 30 seconds rest in between. Your first time, do 60% LOP in the legs and 40% in your arms and start with 20 to 30% of your one rep max. As you become more accustomed, you can increase the weight to 40%, but no more than 50%. For example, let's say you're an athlete who had a knee injury who cannot squat deep without pain but can do partial range work. BFR can be a helpful part of the rehab process while you fix the underlying mechanical issues in mobility and stability so the athlete can then optimize the return and not see significant losses in strength or hypertrophy. A workout routine with BFR could look like this. The first exercise could be a box squat using 20 to 40% of the one rep max, then going to a touchdown single leg squat off a small box. Then you could finish with straight leg raises. Notice how we went from more complex movements to more isolated movements. Make sure to use the same 30, 15, 15, 15 protocol with every exercise and then deflate the cuffs only after you're done with that exercise. This protocol can also be helpful for masters athletes who cannot lift heavy as frequently as they used to and still recover. For example, one such study in 2011 divided its participants into three training groups and had all of them perform the bench press. One group performed customary high load resistance training protocol three days a week. Another performed only low load BFR with 30% of their one rep max. And the last group performed the high load training once a week and low load BFR the other two days. At the study's conclusion, the researchers found the high load resistance training group and the combined group were able to make significant improvements in their one rep max strength. The group that only trained BFR did not improve. So that's why BFR isn't a complete replacement for heavy lifting. However, the results of the study do show that it is possible to modify how often an athlete lifts heavy and still finds progress. Let's talk about how you could use BFR in your warmup. Research has shown that BFR training can neurologically increase muscle activation coordination without over fatiguing the body. In fact, elite powerlifter Chris Duffin used BFR as part of his warm-up in quest of squatting 1,000 pounds for three reps last year. To use BFR as a warm-up, simply perform a few sets of low load movements before loading up the barbell. This should not be an extremely fatiguing protocol. Here's an example. Let's say you have a heavy squat day planned. You could do a dynamic warm-up, maybe a couple minutes of mobility work at the hips and ankles, followed by the McGill Big 3 to prime stability. Then use BFR three to five sets of 15 body weight, just air squats with 60% of LOP with 30 seconds rest in between each set. Then put some weight on the bar and start with the rest of your workout. Next, let's talk about how you use BFR to improve your aerobic capacity. By using BFR with short 10 to 15 minute bike rides, we can bring out excellent cardio improvements while eliminating the harmful effects of long duration endurance training for the strength building process. For a strength athlete, improving your VO2 max can help enhance your recovery between workouts and in between sets of lifting. For this purpose, inflate your cuffs to 60 to 80% LOP and just ride a bike at light intensity. You should strive for a pace where you could have a conversation. To get massive results, you don't need to go fast. This will also bring out a very intense pump for just 10 to 15 minutes, so have fun. Last, let's talk about how you would use BFR with your recovery. While sitting in a relaxed position, increase the BFR cuffs anywhere between 80 and full occlusion for five minutes. During that time, just relax, read a book, and watch some TV. After five minutes, deflate the cuffs for one minute before reapplying for two more rounds. Research has shown that this method of using BFR was just as effective as active recovery and the use of NMES to enhance the clearing of metabolic waste by exercise and enhancing maximal performance. I'm not suggesting BFR is the new gold standard of recovery. However, we can confidently say that BFR is a very helpful tool in aiding in the recovery process. Now, in order to get the maximum benefit from BFR training, you need to perform it frequently, at least two to three days a week. Completing BFR training once a week is simply not enough to get significant results. Remember that the ultimate goal of BFR training is to use lighter weights to trick the brain into thinking that it's exercising more rigorously than it really is. While increasing load over time can be helpful, don't get carried away. Going over the recommended 20 to 40% of your one rep max can be extremely uncomfortable and limit the potential benefits of BFR. So here's my final thoughts. If you want to increase strength, 
grow larger muscles, or build endurance, you need to stress your body. Without stress, there can be no progress. The question then becomes, how do you optimally stress the body in order to meet your physical goals? The goal with BFR training is not to try and reinvent the wheel. Lifting heavy weights is always going to be the most effective method to gain strength. You can't rely solely on BFR training with lightweight and expect to break your PR in your back squat. But when used appropriately, BFR training does allow us to maintain muscle, strength, and hypertrophy during periods of injury and also boost recovery for healthy athletes. I hope you now have a better understanding of how BFR training works and how and when you can apply it. Thanks guys for watching today's video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. And if you have any ideas for future videos, let me know as well. Until next time guys, happy squatting.